So uh, my presentation would be a talk about um, fractal geometry and the application uh, to construct uh, 3D uh, designs. So I will start with something rather simple in fractal geometry. I will use the terminology of um, contour, for example, the third middle uh, set, uh, also the uh, von Koch uh, curve. Uh, I will use also the uh, Sierpinski garbage to define the concept uh, with the dimension of uh, Hausdorff and Bezikovic. And I will show you some examples of what we did using um, tools of uh, fractal geometry uh, to construct a new 3D design. I will start, of course, with a 2D design. And I will take you, for example, uh, a chessboard. So I will show you right now the image. I hope, Emilie, that the image is OK. Yes, so yes. I can share it. Yes, yes I think it's good. All right. So what we have, we have a new kind of chessboard. Uh, this is a chessboard cell. We call it like this because it's Serpinski, Einstein, Rosen. You can see that we have uh, white and black squares, but also blue one. You see the dimension of uh, uh, the pattern is in fact uh, eight by eight nine by nine, but of course, um, three by three with big squares, in fact, is a modification of the Serpinski gasped uh, to do what? Uh, to play chess with a quite different way. So the, the design was made, in fact, by a fractal geometry. And I, I can show you, of course, a, a, real, a real one to see the difference with the normal and the classical chessboard. So this is the result at the end of the process. And in fact, when you are on the blue squares, you can make a hyper move, which is the following, like the night move from here, you can go there. So this concept, um, I can show you another one here. Maybe it's more easy to see it and to uh, understand the situation. So you see that we have nine pieces, nine pounds, but we have two queens. So it's quite, a, quite different, okay? The other pieces are the classical pieces. The moves are the classical, except for the blue cases. So we use what? We use, we use um, self-similarity, a fundamental relation due to also uh, Weierstrass and of course, Julia and Fatou for the French mathematician. Uh, it was uh, emphasized by Mandelbrot. And at the end of the process, we use it to define this kind of new chessboard. We generalize this chessboard, I will show you another one and see the other moves. So this is a Sir Fortress chess, uh, a little bit more complex with four fortress. Uh, the design was used in the 19th century, but we change it and we use this uh, mathematical process to generalize the moves uh, of the blue squares. And now you can see how it is possible to use it. And I think maybe it's more easily uh, understood it, that we have a fractal geometry. So I will use, an, oh, maybe to show the, uh, the a real one uh, to understand for the chess player, especially. So this is a, a real one as we have the design. So it seems to be a design in 2D. In fact, it's in 3D, but okay. I will explain in another example. So uh, the other one was in the uh, field of chemistry. So 
Uh, I will not explain the chemistry process. It's about catalysis, but I will show you the different position and the different situation. At the first time, we have a principle like this, rather simple. So we need something more complex. And that's why we try to find other system. I will show you the first and you will um, understood everything why. You see von Koch here. So this is a geometry like von Koch inside, Vauban outside. This is a generalization of this kind of object with only a star and the von Koch, the easy one. So we want to use this kind of three design um, to have a maximal surface for a minimal volume. And with this kind of process, we can find another one, this one. So you can see that the design is quite different. And um, we have already something which is very simple linear here. Here we have something which is like a networks and we use in fact uh, this L and we can generalize it at this level with triminos. So we showed this and now a bigger generalization, more fractals if you want with self-similarity. So we have uh, many pieces like cross. Here we have von Koch with a star, easy star. So the first level of von Koch, here we have the third level of von Koch. So what does it mean? It means that we have a very big surface for a small volume. It's very important when you use gas in catalysis. So with this kind of object, we have made a patent. So I will show you now the real patent. Maybe you can see it right now. So you see the, the designs, uh, the patent was made with the geometry of fractal sets. It was uh, created to make a system more efficient as a process. So we use, in fact, the Vauban process for the robustness. We use the von Koch process for the fractal aspect. And we get a result, which is a patent uh, for uh, the world. Uh, here, you can see the first time um, the patent for friends. And we can see here what we use uh, to do with this system. And by this, in fact, we have a process. Now I will explain it with maybe a board. So again, I think you can see it right now. I, re I will write now. Okay. So, <clears throat> Cantor, Von Koch, at the end of the process, we have self similarity. We want to use it also with Serpinski. I mentioned already the system of Mandelbrot and also Bezikovic for the dimension aspect. So we want what? A volume, small. We want a surface, big. We want all this kind of thing. The solution is the fractal geometry. And we use it to create 3D design. 
not only for the design, but as you see it, uh, also for chess, for example, but also for chemistry. And this was the result, five patents. So why we use this? In fact, it's more efficient. And this is a paradox because we start with the beauty of fractals with uh, the fractal geometry we discover that we can get a nice property efficiency and we have also robustness and with that we can have a, an application and this application is relevant in catalysis so something which is only about beauty so from essence at the end of the process is something which is useful so we have i mean something which is related to art but at the end we have something which is related to society. <laughs> this path was made by maths. So if you have now, in fact, the big picture, uh, at the first time we had a problem, A real problem. We decide to put this problem in mathematics. So theory. In this level, we choose beauty first. With beauty, we got truth. And with that, we get the efficiency and the robustness. So at the end of the process, when we are uh, speaking with chemistry level, uh, we see that something which is just a tool for chemistry was in fact a model in math, chemistry, but the relation between the model in math and the tool in chemistry was made with the three design using fractal geometry. So I think we have a, a very good example of what we can do with the geometry vision using fractal geometry with this kind of concept to discover new fields of application and in this field, we need some tasks, but at the end of the process, we can get <coughs> a beautiful result about this task with the properties of the fractal geometry itself. So we don't need anything more. Uh, the idea is just that if you start with something which is beautiful, in math, it can be useful for society. So we have a, a paradox
society needs something for society which is useful. But if you stay at this level and you see only the useful aspect of the process, this will be easy. And we need something which is more complex because in fact, is simple. So I try to define something which is very important for us, easy and simple are different. So in fact, simple is more related to complex because it's very complex to be simple and it's very <laughs> simple to be easy, <coughs> but complex is not necessarily related with difficult. So the example we gave show that if you stay only in the field of the chess or only in the field of chemistry, you have only a classical approach with no innovation. Now, if you use math in another way, I mean, for example, beauty of fractals, you will find free models which are able to be tools. And you will get an application which is innovative. That's why I want to mention these two examples for you. Um, and I think it's uh, relevant to the conference. And I mean that if we can do this and at the end of the process uh, get patterns at the European year level and also the international level, we have to think that this project was a three year project, more than 1 million as a budget, but at the end of the process, the best result was just the application of your, the beauty of geometry and for this example, especially the geometry in the fractals set. So the discovery of uh, Mandelbrot, and that's why we are very happy uh, to show this example because uh, very often, even for the professor, the teachers uh, or the students, uh, we think that we have to be only in one field. So it was a great pleasure for me um, to have this presentation on, in your conference, because I think it's very important to see that uh, we have to be uh, an open mind uh, people to discover new uh, application in new fields and not just stay in the core of our knowledge. So the first time, what is difficult is in fact, the lexic. We have to speak about this concept to other persons, but at the end of the process, it's very useful because it's a nice way to go to transdisciplinarity and to get really innovative results. That's all. Thank you so much. Have a good continuation. Thanks again, Emilie. Merci à tous et frères et sœurs policiers, allus, nastekala.